We are back here in Ledbury today, a village that we love and that I've been to many, many times. If you'd like to see more about Ledbury, please check out my Ledbury vlog, which I will link in the description. But today we're here on a family history visit because we are going to several of the ancestral villages of Ian's ancestors, along with his father and mom and his aunt. So the first stop on our family history tour today is Ledbury. We do know, for example, one ancestor, Thomas Richardson, lived here from 1711 to 1747. He was born and got married and died right here in Ledbury. And I haven't found church records, but I'm thinking maybe this church here is where his christening and marriage uh, and maybe even burial took place. So we're gonna go check it out now. Walking down the charming church lane, there are a couple nice heritage stops. Today, I'll show you inside the Butcher Row House Museum of Victorian Life. 19th century clothing for christening infants. And this is a coachman's uniform. And a beautiful ladies silk dress from 1870. This crazy looking thing is called a boot bath and it's from 1786. It's called a boot bath, not because it bathed boots, but because of its shape. It was kept in St. Catherine's Chapel or the almshouses here in Ledbury and toted around from door to door. Its purpose was to bathe the poor of Ledbury. Residents of each house would come out and have a bath. In between houses, some water was let out and some fresh water was added. There are very few of these boot baths still in existence in England, so it was fun to see this one. And this snake-like object is an ancient tuba. This vintage musical instrument is the famous hurdy-gurdy. This Tudor building with the low doorways houses the Ledbury Heritage Center. To see a bit of what's inside that, check out my Ledbury video, which includes a wee tour. Another noteworthy thing on Church Lane is this Prince of Wales Freehouse, which is important because it has a sign featuring an otter. And if you like this adorable otter logo, you can see more of it on the otter glasses I bought from Otter Brewery. They are featured in our Root Beer vs. Dandelion and Verdict taste test video, which I will also link in the description. But today, our focus destination in our Ledbury visit is at the end of Church Lane, the parish church of St. Michael and All Angels. This is what the church looks like now. And here is a drawing of what it probably looked like in 1140. Not sure if Ian had any ancestors in the area back then. Reading the tombstones and looking for family names. This is the only grave or monument we've seen with a family name on it. This Woodward monument, although not sure they're related because this is many decades after the Elizabeth Woodward we know of on our family tree that lived in Ledbury. Beautiful stained glass windows here and some lovely monuments. There are two baptismal fonts here, but they are not that old, not old enough to be when our ancestors were here. This one is from the late 1700s. This font is from the 1800s. The volunteer here told me that it was designed by the same person who did the Victoria and Albert Memorial in London. It is quite beautiful. Here is a photo of Ian with his father and his father's sister. They all enjoyed the visit to this church where their ancestors once worshiped. Before leaving the church, I'll share a few more views of the stained glass, the beautiful monuments, and the famous painting of the Last Supper that I mentioned in my Ledbury vlog. Now it's time to leave lovely Ledbury and head to our next stop on the family history tour, the village of Suckley. Here we will visit the parish church of St. John the Baptist. Now we are in the village of Suckley and the church is beautifully maintained as is the churchyard. Inside, I thought the Victorian tiles on the aisle of the choir were particularly pretty and I also love the Gothic windows. My ancestors, James Bridges and Anne Nielsen, were born here in Suckley 
in the 1750s. The pews had been removed in the nave to make it a more versatile, multi-use space. This photo shows the old Suckley Church, which was demolished in the 1870s before the current church was built. So Ian's ancestors from the 1700s might not have worshipped in this exact building, but since the font is from the 12th century, I bet they were christened by this exact font. Therefore, I talked Ian and his dad and aunt into posing for a photo next to it. Sadly, my father-in-law did not get to play the organ. We figured it was probably locked up. The readable tombstones in the churchyard are from the late 1800s, long after Ian's ancestors were buried here. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the tombstones are broken or missing. Well, there's a tree in the churchyard has some nice little magenta blossoms on it. Maybe someone can tell me what kind of tree this is. Here's the yew. Very tall you compared to the size of the church. Before our next destination on the tour, we are stopping to have a spot of lunch here in Suckley. And I'm pleased to report that the place we ate did not suck. The Glass House Cafe is actually amazing. It's a glorified garden center set in a very lovely garden location. The food was absolutely incredible. Everything was homemade, and look at these tall, puffy scones. And later, I saw that they even make their own clotted cream. They source only fresh local ingredients, and every dish at our table was delicious. Here's a quick review. Lamb kofta with yummy tzatziki and hummus. A fresh garden salad with the tart of the day, which is beetroot, feta, and cumin, with a tomato chutney on the side. The steak pie with veg and potatoes. And for dessert, everyone else enjoyed these gigantic, gorgeous pavlovas. But I was just desperate to try those lovely scones. So I had a cream tea for dessert and was chuffed to bits. And the atmosphere was delightful. A light and bright, lovely greenhouse setting. I was literally gobsmacked, as was this chap in the garden, that in this little village of Suckley, in a hard-to-find garden center, there could be such scrumptious food. If you are in Herefordshire, make an excuse to come to Suckley just to eat at the Glass House Cafe at Holloway's. I highly recommend. Our next stop is the village of Hanley Castle. Village of Hanley Castle and there's lots of half timber homes around and here is the church and I love this war memorial I've got to get a close-up of the top of it lovely old tree that you walk under as you approach the church makes me feel good to visit a place like this and see what beautiful places my ancestors lived in. I know they had a really hard life, but they really lived in beautiful surroundings. Very old looking door. It is. And we have never been in here. We have not been in this church before, so we're interested to see what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I love the arches. These Gothic arches are so beautiful. The beams are in really good condition. And the first thing I noticed was the stained glass windows. We're here at the right time of day for the light to be hitting this one just right. The colors are brilliant, just magnificent. This village has its origins back in the time of William the Conqueror, when he gave this land to the Lechmere family. It is also where King John built his castle in the 15th century, which explains how the village got its name. The Norman Church of St. Mary, which has been rebuilt and renovated over the centuries by the Lechmere family, is also where P.G. Woodhouse's aunt 
was the vicar's wife. The stunning marble Rirdos is a Victorian restoration from 1858 made of alabaster, stone, and marble. It is stunning and unlike anything I've seen in any other village parish church. Artifacts from the ancient church construction. I don't think this church has as many visitors because this guest book goes back to the 1960s. I must note that Hanley Castle is actually in the county of Worcestershire, but I'm going to include it in this Herefordshire video anyway. It was fun to visit this ancestral village with Ian since neither of us had been here before. And for once, I got Ian to pose next to a devil's door, which is usually my thing. The last village we have to show you on this tour is a very special one to our family. We have visited here a number of times with various family members. It's the village of Cradley, which is back in Herefordshire. Last year, we visited Cradley on Jubilee weekend for their village fete, and I learned at the Women's Institute booth that Cradley claims to be the largest village in England. I'm sure that is geographically, since the population is less than 2,000. Here's one cool thing you'll see on the outskirts of Cradley is this post box. I like it not only because it is a George VI post box, which I don't see often, but also it's green instead of red. If you have a post box near you that's something other than Elizabeth II, let me know in the comments. Go in here through the old lich gate. the Cradley Church of Ian's ancestors. This certifies that the yew tree here in the churchyard is 1,200 years old. I mean, that is just a magnificent giant old yew. Here's the inside of that lovely big Norman tower and its beautiful bells. In this church, Ian's ancestor, William Yap, would have been christened in 1720, Elizabeth Lewis in 1723, and William Smith in 1730. But the earliest ancestors we've found here are Samuel Yap in 1694, and Mary Harbridge in 1697. The font in the church is from 1722. And what's really fun is that we came here last year on the 300th anniversary of the font's installation and took photos of our sons, Trent and Weston, standing next to it. Today's photo will be of Ian, Paul, and Mary next to it. I love the stained glass window behind the altar, but my favorite is this one over here. church cottage across the, the road from the church is just lovely and then of course the village hall here is a favorite of ours with its lovely Tudor architecture. In the village hall they do have records for more recent burials but we have no way of confirming the burial locations for Ian's distant ancestors or finding their graves. Currently, the village hall is used for community events and wedding receptions and whatnot. But back in the day, it used to be a grammar school. It's fun to look at the old photos of the children queuing up and getting their school dinners here. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us. Please check out my video of Ledbury next. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.